Thank you for tuning into the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. Grab your Bible, get settled, and let's walk through the Word of God together. Let us now reason together and listen to see what God is saying to us today. I just was thinking for this week, a lot of things came across, um, hit me, a lot of things hit me, and it just led me to reflect on uh, what I'm going to say today. But it's been said that tomorrow is the busiest day of our lives, because we defer until tomorrow what we should do today. Now is the best time, don't wait. Proverbs 6, 4 tells us, This is the ESV version. Give your eyes no sleep and your eyelids no slumber. But the New Living um, um, Living Bible tells us. New Living Translation. Thank you. Thank you. Drew a blank. New New Living Translation says, don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Jesus said in John 9, 4, as long as it is day, we must do what the one who sent me wants me to do. When the Holy Spirit puts something on your heart, do it. For tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Do what you need to do today. Don't wait to receive Jesus. Don't wait to give the gospel. Don't put <coughs> off doing the will of God. Don't wait to call someone. Don't wait to pray for someone. Don't wait to apologize to someone. Don't wait to tell someone you love them. We don't know what tomorrow holds or if we will be here or possibly them. It is all possible, if all possible, make yourselves available. Dr. David Jeremiah said, The greatest gift of all is the gift of availability. Now is the best time. Don't wait. We should go about our day saying, I will do what the Lord leads me to do today. Because we don't know tomorrow may not come. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Stop a praise in this place today. You know, we need some more workout, Pastor. Uh-huh. Them, them arm muscles and them hands, I, they just, I don't know, they got a little weak today, but I'm I just joking around. But I just, um, as I stand before you all today, I, I just want to thank God for another day. Thank God how he has been opening up uh, some things to me. And not about anybody else but myself. So Pastor had put this, um, this prayer out yesterday. Now, usually when something that long, I'd be like, I'll go back to it later, right? I sat there and I listened to this whole thing. I'm just saying. And I got so much out of it. So I just want to share with you all what I got out of it. And this is what I got. Embracing the plans and the thoughts of the Lord will help us walk through adversity. We need to learn how to rest, pray, and have solitude in the Lord. We will not be defeated. There is no time to be defeated. Even if they hurt, if you hurt, keep the right attitude. We are made for another place. Things to do for today is to give your heart and your time and your availability, I love what you said, to the Lord. Be grateful for the challenges that you go through because everything that we go through is for a purpose and a reason, right? And sometimes we just don't understand it. But we gotta realize that God steals the storms that we go through. Remember when he was on the boat with Peter and them, them fishermen, and they were like, Master, Master, get up. You know, the storm is talking, they were scared. But he steal the storm. So we got to learn to have the peace that God gives us to steal the storm because the storms are not really as big as we think they are. God's grace is sufficient. His timing is perfect. There's a time and a season for everything. Everything we go through is for a purpose and a reason. It's a part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. If we didn't go through nothing, it it wouldn't change us. So we have to be changed 
So in order for us to be changing, sometimes we have to go through some stuff. The most important thing we need to do is guard our heart because it's being transformed. And when our heart is being transformed, it's transforming us in the inside and the outside. We need to lean not to our own understanding, but we always need to trust in the Lord because he is the one who directs our path. We can't direct our own path. We have, that's why it's so important that we go to him about any and everything that we go through, even the smallest or the biggest thing. It doesn't matter. We need to trust and believe in God. We say we believe God. We say we trust him. But when we're going through something, we always start being fearful and, and, and want to run and run away. When he said, come here, Turn away from running, but turn to me. When we learn to turn to God about everything that we go through, we will have a, a better life because the more we run, the more we're not running the race. If we run in the opposite way, if you say you're going to run this race, but guess what? There's some things that you got to go through in order to run this race. God gives us power, and he gives us his hand. He's like, he's like, here, Karen, come to me. He opens his arms up. But I'm like, but I'm not ready. Or, uh, well, let me, let me pray about this. Let me repent about this here. But when God opens his arms up to you, you run to him. And, the, it, and when you run to him, it's like, Lord, please forgive me. See, you got to run to him in order to repent. You can't just say, I'm just going to repent about this, and then I go to the Lord. He wants you to run to him first. Repent. Kneel down to him and Lord, ask the Lord for your forgiveness. God has unfailing love for us. We say we love one another, but God's love is unfailing. No matter what you do, say, or whatever, that God still has love for us. He said he'll never leave us or forsake us. He said he will forgive us for all that we have done. He's already done that, but we forget that God has already forgiven us. Amen? He said, when you start lifting up your eyes from whence cometh your help, you can walk in the light and you will not be defeated. Thanks be to God, we, we are valued. We are his workmanship. We, we are who he has called to, to go out and help save other souls. Amen? So don't be guided by your feelings. Be guided by the spirit of the Holy, the Holy God, the Holy Spirit. So I just wanted to encourage you all with this today. I'm, I'm just so excited today. I, I really am. And that's a lot. Like I was telling the pastor, I was like, you know, when you listen and stuff, sometimes you don't, you, you know, you're so busy, you don't, you don't sit and hear, listen to the whole thing. I told him, I was watching, but that when I first started listening to it, I was like, hmm, this is good. This is for me. So I want to encourage each and every one of you all. If you haven't listened to that prayer that Doc, well, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> I can't see. I'm listening to uh, Sister Brian. She called him Doc. I don't know why that, well, Doc. <laughs> Yeah, listen to it because it's so it, it, it helped me so much and it showed me that um it made me realize that you know I am a child of God and, and the things that I go through it is nothing that God can't handle. Mm -hmm. That all I have to do is talk to him about it. It ain't always gotta be others, but sometimes you gotta realize some of the things that you go through, it's good to talk to others because if God sent you to somebody, it could be exactly for that person. So I want you to stop being fearful and start thanking God for being a part of your life and start doing the work that God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Radio Network. Stay tuned for an encouraging word from Pastor, Teacher Dr. James Sutton. Let's see what Pastor Sutton has to say to us today. prophets you see the holiness of God in his, in his seriousness about his laws and what he gives us and as we live out our lives we need to pay attention to what the Bible's trying to tell us and truly what the Bible's trying to tell us right now is you can't do it without God you can try but you can only go so far without God and when I thought about life, life, we always thought life is like a circle, secular. We always say things, there's nothing new under the sun and everything comes back around. 
But if you ever thought about this, if you take the time to do this when you're at home, draw a circle on a piece of paper. And that's say that's your life. And if you start at one point of your life, sometimes you end up back at the same point if you go round and round and round. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are going round and round and round mm -hmm. in our lives. You, you, you're not, it almost seems as, as if you're like on a five-year cycle or two-year cycle. You sometimes end up back and say, how did I end up here? Well, the one thing you're going to do in that circle, draw a line straight across all the way through. Well, when you draw a line through the circle, it creates an axis. An axis, and I'll say access. An access point to where it's when you're on that circle of life and you draw your line, you come to that line, that's God. God is that line that goes through your life. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point when God goes through your life, you have a choice. Okay. You can stay on the circle or you can go the straight way to God wow. and what he has for you to do. Okay? That's your decision. That's your free will. When you meet God, wherever you meet God, and that line represents wherever you met God, whether you met him on the top of things or you met him on the bottom of things, you met God. And now it's your decision process. Do you follow God? Or do you resign to keep going in that circle? So many of us as saints of God on this emotional circle, we think it's spiritual, but it's really just our flesh. So we need to faith and trust. We need to have faith and we need to trust. And faith is simply that you believe. And you might think trust is synonymous, but there's one thing about trust that's different from faith. Faith is what you believe. Trust is how you demonstrate your faith. I'm going to say that again. Faith is what you believe. And trust is how you demonstrate your faith. What did he say about Abraham? He said, Abraham trusted God, and it was a crown to him as righteousness. What he did was he had faith in what God told him, and he exercised his faith by a movement of trust. So you can't say you don't you have faith and don't trust and you trust God without any movement because because James said it simply faith without works of trust are dead. You don't do the work to earn salvation. You do the work because you appreciate salvation. Mm -hmm. You do the work because you adore salvation. You do the work because you understand that Jesus completed His assignment. Mm -hmm. And you say, what they got to do with Jeremiah? Each one of you have been chosen by God, and you're still here because you're on an assignment. Mm. Some of you know what your assignment is, totally, and some of you are still trying to figure it out. And I'm saying if you're still trying to figure out what your assignment is, maybe you need to get off the circle and trust God and walk out on faith. Maybe you need to try that one time. I mean, and, and this is what I want to tell you. The Bible even describes those who trust God and look back as not fit for the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I know sometimes I think about giving up. I think about throwing in the towel. Not so much throwing in the towel that I don't have my salvation thing, but just hold this ministry thing. Amen. You feel like throwing in the towel. But then I got to look at Jeremiah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to get it. I got to look at Jeremiah. Given an assignment. And do you know for the 40 some odd years he preached, did nobody get saved? Nobody got saved. And he was told, it was interesting, he was told up front, I've chosen you. And of course, the, you have the pushback like, I ain't ready, I ain't the one. God said, I'm going to put this in your mouth. I'm going to strengthen you. And you're going to talk to nations, not just to the nation of Israel, but you're going to talk about a whole, all the nations that are on the earth. And I'll put a word in your mouth. For the nation of Judah. Yeah. For the southern tribe. And it's not going to be something that they're going to want to hear. But have you noticed, I don't know about y'all, when I was given, when I knew what I was assigned to do, I thought the world's going to follow me like a pie piper. Because <laughs> you're thinking it's from God. Yeah. It's got to be good. And you know it's yes. intrinsically, you're like, it's good. And my life going to change. Yeah. And it's going to be great. No, because great is subjective. Yeah. It's only great when I'm doing what God has called me to do. And sometimes, saints of God, when you're doing what God has told you to do to measure it, the world is going to hate you. He even said, if you're friends with the world, you're an enemy of God. 
The world is going to hate you. People that you come to preach to are going to dislike you for one reason or another. They'll make up something. They'll accuse you of things. And they did that with Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. They accused this man that was sent by God to first warn them. Mm -hmm. Paul even says, we warn and we plead. He's warning them. Think about it. Your ministry, you're going to warn them of the impending doom that's coming if they don't turn. And it's all through Jeremiah, all through the Old Testament, God is saying, just turn back to me. Just, I don't care what you've done. Just come on back. He even said in one passage, what did I do to you? What did I do to you? And some of you relate to God like that. You quit. You walk away. You and, and, and again, this is this is what people do. Okay, this ain't nothing that I ain't thought of. And, and on some level, I haven't done sometimes. It's just that before I can actually walk away, God says, "Where you going? What have I done to you?" Oh, you thought when I chose you, no matter what your assignment was, everything was going to be good. He said it is good. But why, Lord, I say, Lord, why I ain't feeling good? Well, that's that part where he says regulate. I need to regulate my emotions and my feelings when it comes to God. I need to understand God don't care nothing about my feelings. Especially when my feelings take me away from my assignment. <clears throat> don't allow your feelings to take you away from the promises of God. See, some of the promises of God can't take, God can't give you till you regulate your emotions. Because he can't give you that super gift that you've been asking about because he knows your emotions and your character and your lack of integrity is going to mess the gift up. Yeah, you'll mess the gift up. God, you, some of you got some big questions for God about why and what and this and that. And God say, you haven't turned. You're asking me without turning. You're questioning me without repenting, without a changed mind. You want me to show you my hand before you submit to me. Mm. God can only be your ace in the hole if you play the hand that he gives you. He can be a one or eleven. It depends on the way you look at it. And I thought about the word ace and the acronym for ace. I'm come working on something with that. And I said, authentic Christian excellence. Ace. Authentic Christian excellence takes some grit. It takes some integrity. And, and Jeremiah was given this. But every time Jeremiah turned around, he was being rejected by the people and the leaders that he came to warn about God's impending doom. And all God was saying is, if you turn to me, I'll make everything right again. I'll throw your sins as far as the east is from the west. If you return back to me, and you work with leadership first, if the king returns back to me, you ain't got to worry about Nebuchadnezzar. If you turn back to me, you ain't got to worry about the Egyptians. If you turn back to me, and saints, when I think of the church, the church needs to turn back to God. As individuals, we need to quit playing these games with God. These spiritual gymnastics that we play, the physicality gymnastics that we play, we need to turn back to God because the church is emaciated, meaning it's, it's starving for the food of God, which is the word of God, which is the spirit of God. You're trying to go outside of the word and for God to look at me, I'm so spiritual. But again, your attitude and the way you deal with people every day proves that you don't understand the tenets of God. Because even he said, you can go ahead and put on the clothes. Mm -hmm. You can actually come to church. Mm -hmm. You can go do all all the rituals, but your heart is far from me. But Jeremiah, the man of God, is giving the assignment, is telling them Israel, his heart, their hearts are far from him, and yet and still they won't turn. So I thought about this. Why don't we want to turn? And, and again, I, I can go through many different things, but I'm going to go say what I normally say. Any old excuse will do. <laughs> Any old excuse will do why we won't turn. Some is, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to understand. We just need to what? Obey. 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 Some say, I don't have enough time. Okay. Well, this is the problem with time. He's the one giving it to you. You ain't got no time for him who gave you time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right now. Get on my toes. You know. 
Some say it's this person in the church or that person in the church. What about if you the problem in the church? Mm -hmm. See, I can come up with many reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't feel like it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. But you want God to bless you. Right. See, I can come up with many, many reasons. And, and Jeremiah's reason was he didn't think he was qualified. Uh -huh. And that's another thing that we fool ourselves with. I'm going to tell you all a secret. It's not, a lot of pastors won't tell you this. I ain't qualified. Right. I'm being obedient. I'm being obedient. <laughs> yeah. What? Y'all think because I have a doctorate degree and, yeah. and I do what I do and write what I write, I'm qualified? No, I'm obedient. And when I'm obedient, he pours into me because I pour out for you. Yeah. See, it's not about me. It's about being obedient to the call and to the assignment. And when you're obedient to the call and to the assignment, things are guaranteed to go wrong to test your faithfulness. Some of you coming to God think it's going everything going to work out all right. All the bad decisions you made, God is going to look over them. There's going to be no consequences. I'm sorry. There's going to be some consequences. Though some of them decisions you made are so bad that the weeds are still growing up choking you. But this is the thing. Ooh, Weeds can be cut yeah. and flowers can grow. Yeah. When you start planting the right seed in the right soil, it will grow into what God wants it to be. And God will be glorified by it even if you don't feel good. Because through your obedience, you birth the flower of his love. Come on. Mm. Help us. Jeremiah was that dude. Through his tears, through his pain, through his warnings, through his rejection, through his being slapped, through his being put in stocks, through his being rejected, 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 rejected by the people who should have loved him, he stayed on assignment. And he would ask God, he even said, God, you tricked me. <laughs> that was the humanity that we have because when we call by God, we expect everything to go away. We won't. He, he wasn't really saying, God, you tricked me. He right. said, God, it's not working out the way I thought it was going to work out. <laughs> yes. Yes. You told me I'm going to pluck up and tear down. Think about the power he's had and told me, I'm going to pluck up and tear down. Mm -hmm. You're going to straighten out. <laughs> but in the meantime, you're going to be a wreck. Right. God has a way of leaving out the stuff that's really important to us <laughs> when he gives us an assignment. Have y'all ever noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. He leaves it. He didn't, you know, he told Paul how much he's gonna suffer. Paul didn't really think he's gonna have to get beat on. No, 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 no. Paul figured they just talk about me a little bit. And yeah, yeah, everybody gets yeah. saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you imagine when he told Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, and then a prophet called Peter, I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Jesus told him how you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Do your assignment, and this is how you're gonna die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? And we're on that trip. Do your assignment. And you're going to die. <laughs> but you want to die doing your assignment. Yeah. Yeah. You want to die being obedient to the light that you know. Everybody grows at a different rate. And some saints won't grow at all. Not because they can't, they, 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 it's not afforded to them to grow. It's that they have all these preconceived notions that clogs up their growth. They've been in church too long. And they stuck. And they, they just keep going round and round in their church mind. And God said, I'm trying to free you. I'm trying to free you from some things. Well, it's good for me then. I can't tell. Because you wouldn't be going in circles if it was any good for you then. It may have sustained you during that time. But God wants to take you. You say you want more. But the more that you want, it's going to come from a deeper sacrifice for you. You got to put those things away. When you was a child, church early, you all was a child. But when you became an adult, you put away some childish things. That goes into every part of your life, even your relationship with God. There's a maturity that God wants out of you. There's a maturity that Jeremiah had to go through. And he had the only way he could go through it is to be tested, to be afflicted, to be uh, 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 basically, he had to suffer. He had to suffer well, which we covered. So let's open up our Bibles. Because I'm not going to be before you long for real. Let's open our Bibles at Jeremiah chapter 38. Mm. 
I want you to see this. I want you, I want you to see this. I've been wrestling with this. Authentic Christian excellence. We don't see that in this. Uh, 38. Uh -huh. Start at verse 8. <laughs> Amen. 30, Jeremiah 38, verse 8. Through 13. Ebag Malek went from the king's house and said to the king, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they did to Jeremiah the prophet by casting him into the cistern, and he will die there of hunger, for there is no bread left in the city. Now think about this. Uh -huh. This dude Ebag is an Ethiopian uh -huh. eunuch. Uh -huh. He is a subject of the king. Yeah. He holds a position, obviously, where he can come to the king. But now, what he does is show some ace. He shows some authentic Christian excellence. He says, evil has been done by these men, and they've thrown the prophet, the man of God, into a well uh -huh. that don't have no water in it. Mm -hmm, that's right. Sometimes wells don't have water, but they got a lot of mud, yep. a lot of silt. Mm -hmm. And they lowered Jeremiah into this, as you're going to see. But I'm thinking about this guy, Ebed. I'm thinking about the fact that, that he went against the grain. Yeah. He could have just like, left Jeremiah there, but his heart, something pricked his heart to say there was evil being done. Yeah. And because evil was being done, and it was done to the man of God, he went to the king, the one who could do something about it, but the king is the one who put him in there. Yeah. Double-minded. See, when you double-minded, when you have a duplicity spirit, you one way one day and one way the next day, God can't work with you. Right. Zedekiah, going to do something good. He going to let go of all the Jewish slaves uh -huh. after six years. Uh -huh. And then when it didn't work out the way he wanted, he called them back. Uh -huh. yeah. And God said, I'm done now. Uh -huh. See, there's a point in your life I want to tell you about grace. Grace can run out. Uh -huh. And you could be alive and grace ran out. Uh -huh. Because you know what that's called? An apostate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you just don't want to submit. Correct. You have every excuse why you're not submitting. Again, like I say, any old excuse will do. But eBay is like, look, they have done evil. I got to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put my life on the line yes. to try to save the man of God. Yeah. No greater love than this when one man should lay down his life for his mm -hmm. friend. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. eBay took the chance because the king could have killed him. Yes, he could have. Yep. But Zedekiah was pro Prophet, then against the prophet. It depends on who came to him. You know, you got some people like that that, that, that that's cool with you, depending upon who they around. And then when you're not around no more, they talk about you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yep. They in your corner, depending upon who you around and who you hanging around, and as long as you around. But the minute you leave, I ain't like him no way. And then this is what I'm going to say. Anybody that would lay their mouth on children of God mm -hmm. in a negative way, something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about being crit critiquing. I'm talking about being critical. I'm not even talking about judging. I'm talking about being con condemning. Mm -hmm. Ain't wrong. If wrong is wrong, if wrong is wrong. That's judgment. But when you tell me what they don't deserve because you didn't judge them, something's wrong with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no crazy apostles to be I'm talking about. Shall we call down fire on them, Lord? <laughs> what you mean? Call down fire on them. Before I call down fire on them, I'm gonna start with you first. Come on, come on. Yes. Okay. So, so he took a he took a chance. And that's part of the Christian walk. We have to take a chance. He went to that king by faith. He hoped there was a little bit left good in that king that he would listen to him and say, look, they did the man of God wrong. And he went to the king and he begged the king. He said, look, they did the man of God wrong. Can you rectify this? Go ahead. Verse 10. Then the king commanded Ebed Malek, the Ethiopian, take 30 men with you from here. And lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed Malek took the man with him and went to the house of the king to, to a wardrobe in the storehouse and took from there old rags and worn out clothes, which he let down to Jeremiah in the cistern by ropes. 
then Ebag Malek, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, put the rags and cloths between your armpits and the ropes. Jeremiah did so. Then they drew Jeremiah up with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. So they got Jeremiah out. We need some friends to get us up and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Out of our holes. Mm -hmm. This hole was a real hole. And God has shown us that somewhere in the God likes to deal with hole. Mm -hmm. Joseph was in a hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Joseph yeah. was in a hole. Yeah. Jesus was in a hole. Mm -hmm. But this was showing that when you truly are walking with God, no matter what happens to you, it may seem that things are going wrong, but God always has a ram in the bush. Uh -huh. Unexpected. But he has a ram in the bush for those who are being obedient to the assignment. Amen. Obedience to the assignment doesn't mean that you're not going to have trouble. Matter of fact, obedience means you're going to have trouble. Mm -hmm. Look at John the Baptist. He was yes. put in a hole. Yeah. And not only was he put in a hole, he was beheaded. Yeah. Yeah. Now think about it like this. I thought about this. I thought about this for a second. There's something in our imagination to believe that when we're doing God's work, that when our work is done, we're going to have a death that everybody, you know, the chariot's going to come and everybody's going to follow behind us. And most of these men and women of God died lonely deaths. Yeah. yeah. This, is what I, this is what I come to understand. Even though people may help you, continue your assignment, which this Ebed did. He helped him continue his assignment by getting him out the hole, but he was still in custody. Yeah. He wasn't really free yet. He was just in a better place. Yeah. He wasn't emancipated. He wasn't set free to go and do what he did, but he was put in a place where he could continue his assignment. And sometimes your assignments are in places that you're still in captivity. Yeah. Amen. I got that. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. Not do the assignment because you locked up in your mind. I'm scared. Like I say, ain't no excuse will do. You don't. You don't. You don't stop what God tells you to do when He said He didn't give you the power to do it and say because I feel a certain way I'm not gonna do it no more because I'm in this hole and I ain't supposed to be in this hole. I'm in this jail. And I ain't supposed to be in this jail. God, I work for you, but God say. I didn't tell you wasn't going to go to jail. I just told you they wasn't going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all he did say he wasn't going to get killed. That's what he said. See, but our imagination say when God tells us to do something, everything going to come up roses. Yeah. It is if you stay on assignment. Come on. Because sometimes you build and have things and treasures in heaven that moth and rust can't eat. What you get here can going to be taken away. Wow. And God will give you some things here, but think about it, saints of God. We're not from here. We don't bank at Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Chase Bank. We bank of Jesus. Come on. Yeah, yeah. We're storing stuff up there. Come on. Yeah. He died to prepare a table for us. We got a banquet waiting for us, but we got to stay on assignments, saints. Yeah. We got to stay on assignments of our souls. We're, church is not supposed to be everything to everybody. Yeah. It's supposed to be a place where souls can get saved and people can get delivered from certain things and the teaching of God can go out. So when you out here on your loan, is you and the word and the spirit of God standing together when nobody is with you. You don't have to go and find somebody touch and agree. Agree with the word and agree with the spirit. And that's three right there. There you go. And Jesus sitting on the right hand side of God interceding for your behalf. So what else do you need but you and God? Come on. And Jeremiah had to learn that. So Jeremiah is still on assignment. Taken out the hole by a friend and still on assignment. But guess what happens? When you bless. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Woo. When yeah. you're blessed, who is blessed and who's on assignment, God may decide to bless you. Yep, 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 yep. I got you. Mm -hmm. I see too many times in this Bible, whereas some innocent person, some non-knowing person, decide to walk in faith and go against the grain of church folk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go against the grain of the leadership of that day. Mm -hmm. Jesus ain't no Democrat, <laughs> and Jesus ain't no Republican. Come on. 
I said, I don't care who in office because I know who on the throne. Yeah. You don't have to sit back. And, 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 and like I say, he done went on about his merry way. He did a good deed. He got him out. He probably said, Jeremiah, go on. I got to go back to my duty. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> now go to 39. Here we go. Yeah, that's not how story ends. Let, let's see what happens. 39 what, uh, Nancy? 15. Let's 15. start at 15. Yep. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard. Uh -huh. Think about this. The word of the Lord came to why he was shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Venus. Y'all. Yeah. Y'all need to shut up. Yeah. So the word of the Lord can come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need to be in that shut up position. <laughs> shut this up again. <laughs> right. You need to be quiet. You need to close your door and sit with God. Jeremiah was physically shut up, but he was spiritually free. You are physically shut up in these decaying bodies, but you should be spiritually growing. As this decays, your spirit should grow. Your spirit should soar. Your spirit should go every. You 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 should be so much of a different person as you walk with God that they can, people look at you and say you just don't respond like everybody else. Come on. Come on. When I get substance when I get, when I hear remember I told y'all about the different perspectives when I hear the different perspectives I can get a better perception. Yeah. Yeah. Remember I told you about how you go to the eye doctor and he say can you see this one? He put the thing, the lens is on and actually yeah. is that better or this better? Yeah. You're, he's showing you different perspectives to look through. Okay. And when you stand before people who are truly teaching the word of God, they're trying to give you a different perspective. But if you're hanging on to what you think you know and it's obvious that you don't know, then you, what you're going to do is you're going to be miss the perspective moment so your perception can get better. You know what I know you can't handle correction? Thank you. You know how I know when people can't handle correction? Because when you correct them, they always got an excuse of why they're doing what they're doing. They jump to the fence. Oh, this is why I knew it didn't hear me. No, you ain't got to do that. Just to receive the correction. Amen. And move on. Don't let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to understand this. Pastor Sims corrects me. Pastor Gasson corrects me. Pastor Purdy corrects me. Past, uh, uh, Pastor Randy corrects me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all correct me. Mm -hmm. I don't sit there and make no excuse. Right. I can take it. Because I know if I look at from your perspective, God may give me a better perception. So I need to shut up. Mm -hmm. So I can see God in you. Yeah, amen. And listen to what you're saying. Not from your church brain, but from your true spirit of understanding the word of God. I, I focus on the word of God. You change. You just say, come to me with any kind of thing. You got to come to me with word because that's the only place I feel safe. I don't feel safe in your imagination. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel safe in your imagination. Stick to the word of God and I feel a lot safer. Because he said my word going to last forever. Your imagination may change you to burrito. So, so, so check this out. Go ahead, read. Verse 16. Go and say to Ebed Malek, the Ethiopian, mm -hmm. thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will fulfill my words against this city for harm and not for good, and they shall be accomplished before you on that day. But I will deliver you on that day, declares the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. Mm -hmm. For I will surely save you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but you shall have your life as a prize of war because you have put your trust in me, declares the Lord. There you go. Yeah. Amen. The answer to y'all's blessing is y'all have to trust God in action. He said, because you trusted me and got my man of God out, guess what you're going to get? That day coming. <laughs> that day going to happen. See, I'm here to tell you that day is coming. That day is happening where all things going to be laid low. God is going to destroy this earth. That's his promise. That day is coming. 
That day he's going to take his church up out of here is coming. The question you got to examine yourself to make sure you're in the faith or you're going to miss the train. But obviously he made it because of what he did. God said, I'm going to reward your trust in me because you moved in faith. You, your faith made you move and trust me. And what you did is react <clears throat> by going against what was popular, what was, what, was, what was the culture of the day. And you got the man of God out of the cistern. Yeah, you couldn't get him from being locked up. But guess what? Some of us do our best work when we shut up, when we're locked up. We had to start spending time with God. And the word of God came to the man of God and said, I got some good news for you. I can see Jeremiah saying, okay, Lord, what you about to tell me? You got me out the hole. I know you're about to tell me something else good. Yeah, but it's not for you. It's for who saved you. It's for the friend that, that took the time to save you. It's for the friend that took the time to think about you. Consider you more important than himself. He could have got killed. Yeah, he didn't know what he didn't know, had no idea what the results going to be, but he did what was right. And that leads back to my pastor's sermon. That's integrity. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's grit. He had tenacity and he grinded it out. I can imagine the things that went through his head before he went to the king. But the evil that was done superseded any fear that he had because he had to give it a shot. He had to give it a shot, even if he lost his life. It was worth the shot. You guys want everything planned out. You want to know so much, but you can't know that if you don't walk by faith. God don't owe you an explanation of what your next step going to be. He said, I'll be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Now you got to take the step of faith and trust him. What did he do to you that you can't see in his book that you shouldn't trust him? We got to quit giving people lip service when it comes to our faith and actually show them how we walk and how we talk and how we live. This man is a hero. Never going to be talked about again, no more in the Bible. His assignment was simply to get the man of God out of that hole. What if your assignment, the blessings of God, one is your life, but what if what God has for you, what you've been praying for, don't consist in you doing more religious stuff, but helping somebody else? Do y'all understand what ministries is about? It's about other people. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all it's about. What I do, I don't do for me. I do because I'm called to do it, and it's about the grace of God that I can do it and have the zeal after 15 years to continue to do it because I'm a perpetual student of the God. I'm a perpetual student of listening to my elders and letting them give me their perspective who've been in the ministry 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I want to see what they saw because I'm standing on their shoulders, and I've got to say, look, Amen. let me talk to you for a second. How did you do it? When people talk about you. How did you do it? When people turn against you, how did you do it? When people aren't as enthusiastic as they were when we first started, how did you do it? Yeah. How did you do it? And they simply say to me, I had to be obedient to my calling. Uh -huh. And God didn't promise me how it was going to work out, but it will work out for his glory. Yeah. And then I thought, and I said this to some of y'all, I love walking truth. God blessed us, blessed me. But there's no illusion in my mind that what if this is my only assignment? What if this is my only assignment? And God tells me or you, that you've learned all you can, and my assignment is over. You would swear in your mind that God didn't say that. You know why? Because we're under an illusion that churches have to go on forever. That's true. Wow. Wow. And let me tell you something. Churches don't have to go on forever. The church will. Mm -hmm. Got it. So when things become unfruitful in a congregation, 
and becomes traditional and you're just doing stuff to be doing stuff, mm -hmm. it's time to bring it to an end. Amen. Wow. Wow. It's okay. You say, you sanctify, and you say, oh, Pastor Tech, don't lie, Pastor, you say, we was going anywhere, okay? Amen. No, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Mm -hmm. Don't call each other and lie. Just heard me. Don't put your man, put your mouth on it. Just listen to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And with that, let's go to personal. You're not gonna be here forever. Amen. You ain't gonna last forever. You on assignment. You may be in a hole. And my job is to seek and to find those who are lost, whether they in the body or out of the body. I'm supposed to be the one, and others are supposed to be the one to help pull you out of that hole. Yeah. But you still may be kept in captivity. But once you're out the hole, it's on you. And if you decide to jump back in the hole, that's on you too. Amen. But I want you to understand, we are Jeremiah and we Obed sometimes. Each one is being blessed. And you would think Jeremiah would be blessed beyond Obed, but Obed did a certain thing mm -hmm. that God assigned him to do and was obedient and got blessed with his life. And he said, God said, Israel is, Judah is going to be destroyed. Yeah. That day is coming. Yeah. At this point, this is the no turning back point for God. Yeah. There's no turning back. Yeah. He is tired of begging them. He's tired of caressing them. He's tired of warning them. Don't it sound like God with you? Mm -hmm. he, God getting tired because he's like, what else do I need to do for you to get the love and the zeal that you used to have when you first got started? Mm -hmm. That day is coming. What's coming? We got to die. And walking true, I thank God. It's by the grace of God that I still had his zeal. Because there's so many things pulling at each one of us yeah. that pull us away. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It ain't just me. It's you too. Amen. I understand that. Amen. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus... <laughs> And I turn towards that cross. And I look at that bloody mess. Amen. And I begin to think about he could have came down. Mm -hmm. He could have said no. Mm -hmm. But he said, is there any other way I could do this thing? Mm -hmm. He said, no. He said, well, let me rephrase this. Not my will, mm -hmm. but let your will be done. Mm -hmm. If you really want to walk with God, He's going to take you to the places where you're going to be in a hole. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee God going to send a ram in the bush, yeah. an angel, to pull you out. Your job is to recognize what's really going on and stay out of the hole that you got out that he delivered you from. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Continue to show us how to live outside of the hole. Lord, send people into our lives that will help us get out of the holes of our imagination, the holes of our religiosity, the holes of our selfishness, and Lord, continue to show us how to live. Lord, we live in treacherous times right now, Father God, but Lord, it's only testing our faith and making us stronger. Our character is being built by our test that happens every day, and our faith is growing stronger and stronger in you, Lord. So send the tests so our faith can be tested, so we can trust in you, Lord, so we can show you how much we love you because we're going to obey you when we don't even understand. So, Lord, continue to let the light of your word shine forth in our hearts and continue to watch over us as we continue to watch over each other, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. All right. I always want you to be encouraged, blessed, and at peace. And do what? Walk, Walk in truth. truth. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday Worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.